Hi there! In this how-to tutorial, I'll be demonstrating how you can take your own scene elements from a program like Photoshop and animate them using Crazy Talk Animator. This scene here is a little preview of what I'm going to do. All these files are transparent PNG, so just make sure your files are in the right format. I'll start off with a blank screen and import in my first background element by clicking and dragging. I can zoom in a little bit on the element to make it fill the entire scene. Now, I'll just import in the second element. Remember to import all of your elements in as props so you can manipulate and animate them. I'll move this car in now and resize that one as well. You can resize by hovering over one of the corners until your cursor changes, and then click and drag smaller or larger. Next, I'll just drag in my girl character the same as all the others. When I drag these elements in, they're automatically placed on top of the scene, which means they'll appear in front of all the other scene elements. This can be a problem when I add in my semi-transparent paint splash here. If I want to adjust the z-depth of that object, what I can do is click and drag on the z-depth arrow at the bottom of the selection box on that object. You'll now see that the car will move forward. When I move in my next element, which is the text, it now won't appear on top because the car has been moved forward from its original position. So I'll quickly adjust the z-depth of that element as well. I'll skip ahead here a bit after I've added some paint splashes on the screen. Since the scene starts off basically white with only the girl, the first thing I'll do is make things disappear. If I want scene elements to fade in or fade out, then I need to adjust the opacity like I'm doing here with the background. The opacity fader can be adjusted at various frames to make your scene elements appear in different state of transparency at different times. If I simply want an object to appear or disappear, I can use the visibility tool at the top. I'm doing that here with these paint splashes because paint doesn't fade, it splatters. Now there are two scene elements that I want to be linked together in this scene, the text and the paint splash. To link them together, I'll use the link tool at the top toolbar. Just select the secondary item then click the link tool, and then select the primary item. That's what I'm doing here to connect the text with the paint splash. Now when I move the splash, the text will move along with it. I'll just move it all off screen for now, as I want it to slide in later. Now to reveal the elements. I'll move ahead here to about frame 40 with my first background element selected, then adjust the opacity up to 100. Now when I play back, you can see the cool little fade in. I want the second part of the background to fade in a bit later, so here's a little trick to do without the timeline. At the place you want your elements to start fading in, just put the opacity up to 1 or 2, so it can't be seen, but still creates a keyframe. Then move to the point where you want your fade to complete, and move it up to 100. Now you can see the result of this timed fade using a simple, easy technique. For movement, things are a bit different though, and I'll need to use the timeline. So first I'll go into the item menu in the timeline, and select my track for the white splash. The transform subtrack is the track that indicates if the item has changed positions on screen. So now what I want to do is go to the frame where I want my item to start sliding in there and create a keyframe using the add keyframe button at the top of the timeline. Then I'm going to move to about frame 80 where I want my slide to stop and move my splash into the screen. I'll move the splash slightly at different positions on the track to create a sort of jerking effect. Notice that each movement will create an additional keyframe on the transform track. Now when I play back, you can see that the white splash comes in and makes a jerking motion at its destination. Next, I'll make sure I have the car selected in the scene manager and move the time scrub ahead a little bit. I'll then use the same technique I used with the second background element. Just bring in the opacity slider to 2 to create a keyframe, then scrub ahead, then bring it all the way up to 100. Additionally, I have this little animated flash file of some sparkles. I'm going to make this appear simultaneously as the Akar appears to give it a bit more flair. I'll bring it forward and enlarge it a bit first. Again, I want to go back to frame 1 and set the opacity to 0, then scrub ahead right to the part before the car appears, and repeat the same process that I did with the car. 
will eventually look like this playback. What I'm doing now is revealing all the paint splashes I have on this scene. In this case, I'm just doing this using the visibility tool at the top. What I want to do here is open up the timeline and reveal the visibility and transform tracks like I've done here. Once I've done that, I want to go right to the time when the first paint splash appears and reduce its size slightly. I'll then move a few frames ahead and enlarge the size. I'll repeat the process with the next paint splash. Go to the area on the timeline where it becomes visible, reduce the size, then increase it a couple frames down. Last but not least, I'm adding a flash file of some animated parts. I'll just use the same useful technique for fading in elements that I did before. But this time I also want to fade it out at the end. So what I'll do is go a little bit further down the timeline and then turn the opacity down to zero once more. And now we're finished. Here's the playback. You can add in different layers, sprites, flash files, transparent images and videos any sort of media and create a cool intro scene as easy as that.